In the movie Finding Nemo, it took the heroic efforts of a surfer sea turtle, a fish named Gil, and a blue tang with memory problems to reunite Nemo and his dad. But there are hero fish in the real world too. This two-inch striped creature is helping us understand ourselves better. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Zebrafish were chosen um, about 30 years ago, actually when I was in graduate school, and um, as a model organism. Uh, model organisms are those in which we can model uh, human phenomena, human development in this case. Perhaps, Professor Tomes, we should introduce this species, lest someone think you have somehow crossed a striped quadruped with a minnow. The zebrafish, officially known as Danio rario, is a freshwater fish found in slow streams and rice paddies. Unlike laboratory creatures, like fruit flies, the zebrafish is a vertebrate. It has a backbone. That means it is much more closely related to human beings. It just grows up faster. One of the great advantages of the zebrafish system is that the development occurs very rapidly. By 24 hours later, it looks like a fish. We've gone from a fertilized egg to an organism that has a beating heart, two eyes, a head, a tail. It's starting to form some of the other organs. It looks like a fish. And uh, when you contrast that to cells in our own body, it takes them uh, at least 24 hours simply to divide once. Rob Tomes is a professor and head of his own lab at Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, Virginia. One member of his team is a postdoc. Sarah Rothschild has earned her PhD and now teaches cell biology to undergraduates. But what really excites her is her lab work. And I work on polycystic kidney disease. And I use zebrafish as a model system. And we use it to identify proteins that are essential in uh, developing cystic kidney disease. While Sarah works on an inherited kidney disease, Another of Rob's team, Jamie McLeod, is working to understand how a zebrafish egg turns into a minnow. I'm watching the cells move and seeing how I can affect that cell migration, which will then affect how the embryo forms. Lou Francescato, like Jamie, is a fourth-year doctoral student. She's from Brazil originally. My current work is uh, looking at how uh, the organs are positioned within the um, zebrafish body. And what we're showing here is a time lapse of, of zebrafish development. And you can see this cap of cells that occurs on the animal pole of the zebrafish embryo. It migrates down the yolk. And as you can see, the, um, the eyes are starting to form. This is a video that's compressed during the first 18 to 20 hours of development into what we just saw in about 20 seconds, 25 seconds. In addition to growing up fast, zebrafish have big families, just like Nemo's parents. You still have to name them. You want to name all of them right now? All right. We'll name uh, this half Marlon Jr. and then this half Coral Jr. Okay, we're done. I like Nemo. Nemo? Often embryo, the zebrafish um, spawn hundreds of eggs at a time and we can fertilize all of them. They develop synchronously and when you see them all achieving the same developmental state, the same developmental time, all their little hearts start beating, their eyes start flickering, their muscles start contracting, they're breaking at the seams to try to get out of their little eggshell. It's, it's a phenomenon that, uh, that's awe-inspiring. There's something fishy in the basement of the VCU Life Sciences building. Pass by the bins of fish food and something called Instant Ocean. Turn right at the sturgeon tanks, and right next to the frog lab, you'll find Jamie introducing zebrafish to speed dating. In setting up for zebrafish, the first part is to grab a tank and an insert for the tank. 
and then a separator. And we'll be putting the males on one side and the females on the opposite. The obvious question is, how do you tell the males from the females? The answer seems to be in the words of Dr. Seuss. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. The males are actually, um, they have a little red in their, in the trunk part of the embryo, whereas the females are more blue in color and uh, tend to be a, a little fatter. We tend to do um, either one to two females on one side and three to four males on the opposite side. The mating behavior is triggered by light, so the fish spend a night in the dark. The next day, the separator is removed and the fish have at it. Each fish egg that falls to the bottom of the box contains a single cell that has all the information necessary to grow into a complete fish. That process is as old as time, but keeping up with it requires the newest equipment. In this case, a laser fluorescent microscope. Each cell is migrating to a specific location. When it reaches that location, it then continues to develop or it continues to divide or migrate. Um, often the um, cells stop, other times they continue to migrate. Um, each cell has its own specific fate. There's an enormous number of steps that occur, uh, many of which in involve cell migration and calcium signaling. If I may interrupt here, Rob, people probably know that calcium builds strong teeth and bones, but they may not know that small amounts of calcium ions are necessary for the transmission of signals within various cells in the body. Calcium is an important secondary messenger within cells. So there's an eye that has pigment cells, and then you have the ear. And so zebrafish have an ear just like us, and they have stones of the inner ear, and these are important for balance and for hearing. And then you have the yolk sac here, and this is where the zebrafish embryo gets the nutrients from until it's ready to eat. You have the somites, and these somites are important for deriving different types of tissues, and uh, including muscle cells. And the heart you can see beating right here. And the heart starts beating at about 24 hours, and then the circulation begins at about 26 hours. And this fish is about three days old. One mutation that we identified unexpectedly showed a similarity to a syndrome that's referred to as heart-hand syndrome, in which both the heart and the hands, the arms, uh, fail to develop properly. Initially, every developmental biology student wonders, what's the connection between hearts and hands? And it turns out to be a specific gene that um, is important for the development of, of both. And it's true both in the zebrafish and in humans. Well, zebrafish don't have hands, but they have pectoral fins. And evolutionarily, the pectoral fins are analogous to human arms. It's through these sorts of analogous developmental features that we can make discoveries, unexpected discoveries, exciting discoveries. And those discoveries are being made by an army of researchers all over the world. The zebrafish people have their own annual meetings, magazines, and news feeds. It's a busy network because there are many mysteries in how the cells of a developing zebrafish embryo know where to go to form an adult fish. Uh, we're still trying to figure it out. It's amazing how, um, I remember the first time we used to fish in class, how does our body know that uh, the length of this arm should be the same length of that body and so forth. How do the fingers know they have to, to uh, eventually stop at, their, at that size? So how are we like a mirror image, you know, like one side looks exactly like the other. So. I often tell students who are interested in scientific research or ask them, do you like solving puzzles? And do you like uh, mysteries? That's what we do. We um, identify a lot of suspects. We narrow down the uh, potential culprit and uh, ultimately, hopefully, identify it. It's a lot of work. It takes a long time. So, what's the future for the zebrafish? The University of California in San Diego has created a transparent zebrafish with a fluorescent gene that binds to bad cholesterol. Researchers can watch the buildup of plaque in the fish arteries and test ways of combating it. A German team is trying to find out how the zebrafish does regeneration. 
it can regrow a lost fin and even new heart muscles that have been damaged. Humans would give a lot to learn that last trick. And on a lighter, brighter note, zebrafish originally bred to monitor pollution in rivers and streams are now available in pet stores. Manipulating their genes has turned them into the red fish and blue fish Dr. Seuss wrote about and an underwater rainbow of other colors. They've lost their zebra stripes and have been trademarked under the name Glowfish. They may not be as bright as the fish in Nemo's neighborhood, but they have far fewer teeth and they're a lot more fun.